Hey, I'm Lana from Lana Glowshot Art, and in this video, we will be unboxing the May 2024 Sketchbox. This box is all about using water soluble drawing tools to create texture and capture environments quickly. Ready? Let's go. The surface in this month's box is the Magani Incisiani Bianchio. This hot pressed, white, sturdy, smooth paper resists warping while we work with wet layers. Next, we have the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Custom Set. These colors include Summer Sun, Sand, Sea Green, and Billiard Green. We also have the Sketchbox Signature Oval Wash Brush. These Zig Reel brushes work very similarly to standard brush pens. They have a very flexible tip that allows you to play around with pressure and angle to create a variety of different marks. I especially like laying the reel brush sideways and getting these dry brush effects with a light pressure like I'm doing here in this gradient. What really sets these Zig Reel brushes apart, however, is that they are water soluble. So you can choose to use them dry, just like I'm doing here, or you can use water to wet the pigment and move it around like paint. And this gives you a ton of variety when you are working with these materials. In your box, you'll also find an erasable colored pencil, the Prisma Coal Erase in pink. This pencil erases just like a graphite pencil would. So you can layer plenty of pigment down and then pull it right off, which makes it a great tool for sketching. Let's get started by sketching a beach ball. You can start with a circle and then turn this into a three-dimensional object with wrapping lines that create a pattern on this spherical shape. Using the sea green, I began to block in the color. I am going to be able to create lighter washes of color with this, so I decided not to fill the entire area in and instead left some areas that I would like to be a little bit lighter. I am imagining a light source coming from the top left, so the top left of this beach ball will be much lighter and then it will be darker towards the bottom. I then transitioned to working on the sand and I definitely want a shadow underneath the beach ball to the right. So I'm using my sand color and my billiard green to build up a neutral color. Then I scrub in my color with that dry brush technique with both the summer sun and the sand all the way in the background. Now it's time to activate my colors and I'm going to do this piece by piece. I start by activating the entire sandy background first, being really careful not to allow that color to seep into the sea green areas of the beach ball. If I move into these areas before the sand is completely dry, I'm going to get some wet on wet blending, which can be a loose fun technique in some situations, but isn't what I'm going for right now. Then once the sand is completely dry, I come in and activate the layer on the beach ball, keeping a couple little highlights available so that this looks like a really shiny reflective surface. Once this layer is all the way dry, I can continue to layer with either wet or dry techniques, and I choose to use a variety of both. I come in and darken up the shadow on the bottom right side of the beach ball using the sea green, the sand, and the billiard green. The sand, when combined with our blue and green, is going to neutralize this, which is going to make it more subdued and less intense. It's also going to help give that impression of the color of the sand reflecting back onto the beach ball. I don't activate every single line that I put down with water. I do choose to leave a few areas unactivated so that I can play around with texture and a variety of marks. Next up, we have the Jacquard Watercolor Medium in Pearl White. This is a light shimmery product when used on its own, but when you combine it with the Zig Real brushes, you can create some beautiful shimmery tints. Here, I dip the brush directly into the product after I pour it into my palette, and it lasts for several square inches before it turns right back to the original color. This is a really fun way to add some unique texture and dimension to your artwork. Last up, we have the Ecoline Duo Tips in Deep Ochre and Indigo. The broader chisel tip is great for laying down large areas of color, and the bullet nib is really good for detail work. Both of these can be really smoothly blended out with the addition of water, so you can get really smooth transitions if that's the look that you're going for. You can also use these Ecoline Duo Tips to create really seamless blends and gradients. Here I'm using Indigo on the right, and then I'm bringing the deep ochre in on the left. 
with a little bit of water, I'm able to create these really interesting transitionary greens in between the two colors. I'm gonna show you how to use these Ecoline Duo tips with a quick study of a couple seashells. Begin with your Coley Race colored pencil and sketch the basic shapes that you see. We don't need to get too caught in the weeds of the details just yet. Once you have a basic sketch, you'll transition to your eco lines and begin to lay in the value. Focus on laying in more concentrated color in the darkest areas and then leaving the lighter areas the white of the paper. We'll be able to lay down a light wash when we activate the eco line. I am starting with the deep ochre on the fine point edge and I switch over to the chisel tip when I need to lay in bigger areas of color. I'm also using the indigo with the fine tip to lay in more value and to neutralize some of that deep ochre. So I'm focusing this color combination in the shadows that I see. I then use the water to activate and I do want to pull some of the pigment into those lighter areas, but I don't want to scrub out the texture that I've created completely. So I'm very delicate and careful with my application of water. Once this layer is completely dry, I come in with my Zig Reel brushes in both the summer sun and the sand, and I build up the texture. This line quality is one of the really fun things that you can do with the Zig Reel brushes. Notice all of the textures and bumps and crevices in your seashells, and then try to mimic these by playing around with the different amounts of pressure that you apply when you draw the lines around your seashells. You can also play around with volume as as you wrap the line and create a more three-dimensional effect. Using this photo as a reference, I'm going to begin by sketching in a beach. I'm using the Prismacolor Coley Race and I lay in lines that separate the beach from the water and the earth from the sky. But I'm also adding a palm tree in here that is not shown in the photo reference. I felt that a palm tree in the foreground would be a lot more interesting. So I'm using the information that I see in the background to imagine and create a palm tree in the foreground. To create a light water, Wash, you can put your real brush right in a plastic or porcelain palette and then add some water. This will give you the opportunity to lay down a really smooth light wash that you can dilute as much as you want to. Then I switched over to using my real brush straight onto the paper and I use these quick horizontal strokes to imply the texture of the water. I paid really close attention to the value of the water when I looked at my reference photo and I distributed my real brush accordingly. I used quite a bit of the sea green and I also brought in the billiard green and a little bit of the sand color so that I could add a lot of depth and dimension to the water. And then once I felt like I had a really good layout, I added the water and created some lighter variety and gradations. I was sure to reserve some of those white areas so that I could play around with the highlights and the reflection in the water. The prompt this month is beach and there is another full tutorial of a beach with more focus on the palm trees in the basic video so be sure to check that out as well. When it came to creating a wash for the sand, I used a combination of summer sun, sand, and a little bit of sea green. And then I loosely laid this wash in over the entire beach. And then to add some more sparkle and dimension to the water, I dipped my sea green zig reel brush right into the pearl white medium. And I applied this over the top of the dry water. I worked in several different colors for this effect, adding a bit of sand and a bit of billiard green, both of which were combined with the pearl before adding it onto the drawing. I found that the sand zig real brush combined with the pearl white was a really good combination for making it look like wet sand on the beach and I applied this throughout the entire coast. Then when I moved into the background I did a base layer with the summer sun and yes it's not yellow back there but it's green and I needed to use a combination of the summer sun and the sea green to create this green color. The palm fronds were laid in with individual strokes and I looked at the palm fronds in the background and recreated that in the foreground. Then I came in with my Ecoline Duo tip in deep ochre to create the shadow on the left side of the trunk and to bring in some more value and texture into the sand. 
Once I come in with the water and activate the trunk of the tree, the background, the palm tree, and eventually the sand on the beach, I realize that I need a little bit more contrast so that I can really get parts of my drawing to stand out and I can create some more depth. So I wait for the entire wet area to dry and then I come in with my billiard green zig real brush and create deeper value and darker shadows. I do this in the palm fronds and the background and I really sink those shadows back a little bit more. When I combine this billiard green with the sand color, I'm able to create a more neutralized dark shadow, which can be really nice in some of these areas. Most of these areas don't need to be reactivated with water, so instead I lean into creating the final texture with my mark. But if there is an area that is a little bit harsher or needs more blending, I can come in very sparingly with just a touch of water in specific areas. And now this piece is complete. I hope you learned a ton about working with water soluble drawing materials and we can't wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag SketchboxMay when you post your work online. For more unboxing videos and tutorials, you can check out our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.